Wrestling Perspective Podcast. I'm Dennis Farrell. With the old Canada P.D. Williams TNA theme song, which there's no P.D. Williams this week. Uh, truth be told, we're recording this early. It's myself and Russ, who runs the social media over at the Wrestling Perspective Podcast Facebook page. You're listening to this. I will be on the beach in Fort Lauderdale, Florida with my feet up, having a cigar, drinking a beer, not recording a podcast. So we recorded this early. That way there's just a week that you won't get it. Next week, Joe Pizapia and P.D. Williams, maybe even one other, will do a podcast without me because then I will be stuck in Dollywood in a camper with my in-laws doesn't sound fun. (laughs) Russ, what's going on, my friend? Not a lot, my friend. Not a lot at all. Excited to be on the show today. Yeah, it's your first podcast appearance. You are a fan of many podcasts. Who are some of your favorites? For me personally right now, um, I'm always a fan of the Pro Wrestling Torch. That's I've been a subscriber for quite a few years now. Call me Wade. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wade, pick it up. Yeah. Um, Wade Keller, his shows are phenomenal. Absolutely. Um, right now, there's a couple that go off the radar that I'm a pretty big fan of outside of this one, of course. Um, Which is yeah. off everybody's radar yeah, according yeah. to the downloads. Yeah. It's the way I like to do <laughs> yeah. it, you know. We don't want people to know who we are. No, no, it's a secret. Um, I, I really like J.J. Dillon's show. Okay. Um, and be specifically, as you know, we both grew up in the same area, same era, NWA, WCW. So the stories he gets into about the Horseman era and all that kind of stuff and some of the backstage and mm-hmm. are really good. Um, I'm also a big fan of Dutch Mantel and his podcast. Okay. Everybody has a podcast. Yeah. Everybody has one. Um, you know, especially right now, I've kind of been delving into some new ones that are off the beaten path because as great as – Steve Austin and Jim Ross and those guys are. I'm just I'm ready for a change. I needed something different to listen to. They've been at the top of podcasting for so long. I, you, you have to do something to keep things different. Yeah, and and theirs are very formulaic now. Right, and next next year I'll replace PD with somebody else. Yeah, somebody better. <laughs> right, PD. <laughs> It'll probably be me full time. I kid, I kid. <laughs> So, as I said, no P.D. Williams. Uh, We're actually recording this a little bit early, so you won't get a lot of timely information. We will talk about some current events. But we're at the road to WrestleMania, and I've never personally been to a WrestleMania. Russ, how many WrestleManias have you been to? This year, uh, 34 will be my fourth WrestleMania. I went to 22 in Chicago. I want to say it was 20... Was it 27 or 28? That was Cena I versus I Rock. Was, I wasn't with you. <laughs> Cena versus Rock, number one. Okay. And Undertaker, Triple H, Hell in a Cell uh, was the second one I went to. Uh, I was there last year in mm-hmm. Orlando, and I'll be there in New Orleans this year. Let's talk about costs because mm-hmm. I'll be honest, th- this intrigues me. And one of the big reasons why I wanted you to come in and talk about this is I've never personally been to a WrestleMania. I don't know what a WrestleMania would cost. Like in my mind, I'm so detached from cost at wrestling events. My bucket list is to sit front row at a Raw or a SmackDown, and in my mind, that's like a thousand dollars when probably it's only two hundred bucks. I, I yeah. don't know. In my mind, it's like ten thousand dollars to go to a <laughs> WrestleMania when it's probably not even close to that. No, not at all. Um, if I was to average it, I'd say probably about seven hundred fifty bucks. For for tickets, hotel, flight, everything, or just between uh, you know what? Yeah, I forgot about the ride. I forgot about the hotel. Oh, so it's it, it's, it's about probably a closer to a thousand dollars. Which yeah. isn't by the time it's all for done. WrestleMania. No, and we're there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mo- come on back on Monday. Have you ever done any of the fan access stuff? Never done the access. Um, wait, wait. You've been to a handful of WrestleManias mm-hmm. and you've never shown up to a fan access. No. What do you, what do, you do? Well this is the first year that I'm able to get in a couple of days prior to Mania. Okay, so normally so, you showed up that day? The day before. Okay. Usually the day before, based on scheduling. But divorce will do that to a guy. <laughs> well, yeah, it could freeze up a couple of extra days. Yeah, you know, and, I'm, I'm free, who knew? Yeah, you get to move, move things around a little bit. So I'm taking advantage of that right now. Um. You know, I'm, I'm looking forward to possibly getting to an access, uh, but but even honestly, more than access, some of the some of the uh, fringe shows that are downtown. That we're As BD calls them, feeder shows. Yeah. This is I, here's 
one thing I've learned from PD, and I'll pass on to the people, is when when WWE holds a big event like WrestleMania, SummerSlam, or something like this, all these smaller shows will come in and hold shows around those dates because all yes. these wrestling fans come in and they're looking for something to do. Yes, absolutely. Um, so there's there's a show that's joint promoted by AAW and I believe Sammy Callahan. Okay. That uh, we have tickets for. Do you get hit in the face with a bat? Well, I'm hoping you know. Why I got a couple. You? I got a couple of guys that will okay. probably take the shot for me. Yeah, nice. You know, I got a buddy that's a real good looking dude. He could probably take a shot or two. Probably help us the rest of us out. Yeah. Uh, you Gabe. <laughs> you dress up at all the WrestleManias. Uh, the last last year and this year, I, ha- I have. Yeah. When is Ric Flair? I did. I, I still w- want that robe. I'm I. I've been looking. I want a Ric Flair robe. I will hook you up. We'll get you a robe. Yeah, I, I'm I still to trying to talk you into getting one of those uh, seats from you. The, the least borrow and stick. It here. <laughs> yeah, we can bring it over and put it in yeah. right now. It's kind of just collecting some dust in the back room here, here, right now. Here's here's some background to the fans that listen to this podcast. Was I started doing fantasy football with ESPN? So I built a studio down in my basement, which right now it's kind of rudimentary because I'm putting away all my football stuff because. I don't know if I want to go back to football. I am having a blast doing wrestling stuff. So I want to start putting wrestling stuff up into the studio to really give it that, you know, one, two, three fill. Yeah, I think it'll be fantastic in here. But yeah, yeah we will bring the chair and you can have it, you Thanks. know, put it in here. And I, I don't, it's collected dust right now. Yeah, it, yeah. it would be used here. Uh, I would hit Absolutely. Some, I, I hit somebody with it. <laughs> Keeps the wife in line, right? <laughs> kidding, kidding. Sorry, Heather. <laughs> Joke, keeps, I kid. She keeps you in line with it. Yeah. Either way. Yeah. It gets that's, why juice. that's why I'm not allowed to have a sledgehammer in the house. So, and I put that rule in. I'm tired of being hit with it. So you've dressed up. You go to WrestleManias. What is the crowds like? Because we'll get in some wrestling talk here in a second. But I've really been fascinated because you tell some fun stories. You have a ton of great videos out there of you just chest chopping people oh yes last so last year was crazy uh the wrestlemania pub crawl we did last year we're doing it again this year was a ton of fun mm-hmm. a ton of fun um that God, i want there was probably 100 people doing this pub crawl mm-hmm. 75 of them are dressed up okay right there's media from all over the country following there doing stuff yeah following us around um we lost count of like fifty six people that I chopped. Wow! In the day, people did they just, just let you? Did they come up and they say chop me? Yeah, they'd ask me. I wasn't. I wasn't like. You did know. you let anybody chop you? No one asked. What? Nobody asked to chop me. Would you have let them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm of course. I mean, if I'm, I so I, I hit hard. I'm gonna be honest, and <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't. I didn't hold back. Right. So you know, when they get some drunk guys coming up to me and saying, "Hey, can you give me a chop?" <laughs> you bet I can. Right. You know, I'm going to I'm gonna leave a permanent mark and probably put you on your butt. And after about 56 people, your hand hurt. my hand hurt a lot. You know, we were riding back from Mania back to the hotel in a, a little, we caught a, a cab that was actually a guy on a bike. On a ricket. Yeah. <laughs> pulling us. Yeah. And people were trying to stop us on the road way back and asking me to chop them. I'm sorry, I can't. My hand hurts too bad. <laughs> I have who, to turn this opportunity down. Who turned? Who 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 took the chop the best? Was there <sighs> one guy that you go, oh, I'm impressed? No, not really. Who not took when it the it, worst? Was there a baby that took it and started crying? You're like, yeah, yeah. There was a dude in a Roman Reigns outfit, which makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> That he was, he his eyes were welling up a little bit, you know. Well, nice. And I got him twice. The second time was by an ambush, admittingly, but you, you, just because he I dressed like Roman Reigns, yeah, that he I deserved felt he, he deserved that one. I mean, he was a grown man, and he spent the money on that costume, and he deserved it. Well, that makes sense. Wow, look at you. It's a, it's a. We get a little wild. It was a fun time. Did you go to any of the feeder shows while you were there? And last year we did not. No. Um, the just because again I got there um, Saturday night. Okay. Uh, about 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. So I didn't really have a lot of time. And then we left out on Monday. But uh, f- totally irrelevant but fun story was as I was pulling up to the hotel, I got a cab from the airport, pulled up to the hotel. And uh, as I get out of the, the car, uh, Karen Jarrett, and now Karen Angle, is yeah. standing there. And no, says, no, Karen, Karen Angle, now Karen Jarrett. It's, yes, you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, Karen Jarrett is standing there and asked if... She can have the car. (laughs) 
So that you know, I got to meet her briefly, and that was pretty cool. Wow. That's kind of awesome. Yeah, that was pretty fun. So now there's She's two hot. people that's been on this podcast that have met Karen Jared. Yeah, and you're you still and not one of them. Yeah, you and Petey. <laughs> I'm still not one. Let's let's move on to do's and don'ts for WrestleMania weekend. You've yeah. learned a lot over your time there. What are some tips that you can give people who may be going this year, who may want to go in the future? Pace yourself. When it, Especially when it comes to, you know... What amounts to a couple of day party, you know, if, if you don't pace yourself, you could take a nap on Sunday and miss the first pre-show match. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it is, there's solid potential that could happen and I might know how. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, outside of that, honestly, just have fun. Don't be uptight. You know, it, you know, People will, you know, might think it's weird, you know, to dress up. That's the funnest part. Dressing up, getting in costume, being a goofball as a grown man for a couple of days is a ton of fun. And I'm going to be honest, it's not like everyone down, you're a wrestling fan, you know what wrestling fans right. look like. It's not like it's a body contest. Mm -hmm. So put on the spandex and just enjoy yourself. Oh, that you know, that's pretty good advice because I'm not sure I would have the confidence enough to dress up as whoever I would want to. Yeah. Especially Barry Horowitz. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might pull that one off. I could probably pull off a good Barry Horowitz. I just need a jacket with a handprint on the back. Yeah. 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 A little bit of a little bit of so and you'd be fine. Who you went last year's Rick Flair, <laughs> who are you going with this year? This year I'm going to Sting. And talk about the troubles of finding a Sting outfit. It is not easy. I thought, honestly, I thought this was going to be a very simple thing. Sting's obviously very recognizable. You know, there's a ton of sites out there that sell wrestling gear. I found one site that sold Scorpion tights, mm -hmm. specifically. And I'm not doing black and white Sting or anything like that. That's played out. You can see a million of people doing the black and white Sting at WrestleMania. Of course, because it's easy. Probably. It's easy, yeah. So I, I wanted to do something like 1990-ish, um, something out of out of the range, and and it, it was it was a struggle trying to find the tights for that, but I did find them with, and it helps to know a wrestler <laughs> when you're trying to size out those tights too, because uh, you know spandex don't come in the same kind of sizing that. Right. You know, that regular pants do. So PD saved my butt on that. <laughs> nice. So um, finding the jacket, too, was tough. I was going to try to make it. No. Nope. I just had, no. I mean, I mean, I even looked for old band jackets and stuff. It's Salvation Armies, anything I could find, I could fiddle with stuff. I didn't mind putting the legwork in. It wasn't happening. So I, I was able to find something that was, it's a little closer to the TNA style sting jacket. But I'll take what I can get. You know, at least you're not doing the TNA Joker sting. No, no, that, that wasn't very good. That had that could have had so much potential. It could have. And he, uh, I don't know if it was booking, writing, what the t-shirt. The, the the look was okay. <laughs> yeah. It just Sting was not very good at evolving. He evolved once and then held on to that with dear life. Like he was afraid to change it up a little bit. He, he was, and for me, I I always felt. Once that initial angle was done at Starcade, mm -hmm. and he beat Hogan, right? That should have been the end of the NWO. Mm. I wouldn't mind, or it. at least, or at least, the end of the Crow Sting. He completed his goal. He's accepted back in. He had the celebration where all of WCW held him up. He's back. <sighs> that's that's a good thought. I, I never looked at it like that in retrospect. It, it, I thought, okay, the NW was still around. He was still battling. I hated to see him win it that early yeah. in, in the whole thing because that was his nemesis. And then the second he joined the black and or the red and red and black NW Wolfpack, I thought, really? It was a terrible look, a terrible gimmick. It didn't fit. No. Well, I mean, even the same thing with the black and white. Once he law or he had won the belt, and they had the little screw job thing going on, mm -hmm. you know, back and forth, dropping the title around with him and Savage, Hogan and Savage. Um, and he started talking. It all started to fall apart. Okay. He still talked like Sting, like Surfer Sting. 
He did. But he's in black and white. And he was doing the, the woo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there was a, a disconnect for me that never really clicked again with him. There, To me, there was that moment when he was in the NWO. I I thought this, this whole Sting thing is dead for me. Because I was a Sting fan. I wasn't mm-hmm. like the biggest Sting fan. I might have had, you know, the Sting WCW two-page poster yeah. taped to my wall like every other kid did. We definitely ne- did. Yeah. Next to my Miss Elizabeth stuff. Yeah. That was that guy. Uh, <laughs> but the, the second he did that, and I was older at that point, and I thought, really, Sting? No. you get St- He would have been even cooler and kept the Sting persona going if he would have dropped the makeup and just went with, you know, black sunglasses in inside Sting. Like, when he does an interview... He always wears the sunglasses. He's you never see, see him with yeah yeah. I thought that would still have been a kind of a cool Sting gimmick where he evolved one more time into just drop it all. And it would have been fine even if he had done, you know, you keep his hair if that's what you want. You want the hair, that's fine. Yeah. But if he had evolved the paint rather than that stupid red face, yeah. You know, he had done something like he had done with the surfer style, but just did it black and red. So after combinations. After we're transitioning, by the yeah, way, I'm yeah. horrible at transitions. Yeah. Okay. After PD and I did last week's show, mm-hmm. like the second we got done, we had a great conversation about the fabulous Moolah Women's Battle Royal. Yes, we hit stop, we edited it, we uploaded. It's like, hey, we dropped the name. <laughs> okay, so as a fan, and we're fans here, there's yeah. really no wrestling perspective no, no, today. No, it's <laughs> it, it's. It's wrestling fan perspective yes. today. I didn't like it. I wasn't a huge fan of the name, but see it through. Don't give in. I I was not really excited to see that the WWE folded under that much fan pressure this close to the you know to WrestleMania. I felt like they should have at least seen it through, owned their mistake at the end, and then reset next year and did something different. But to drop it this far out. As weird as it sounds, I think you give the fans way too much power, and now they know it. Maybe I see. I don't know because there's a lot of other things they do where they just they plug their ears and their nose and ignore the fans. And not this time. Not this time. No, I mean, but honestly, I don't know if this had as much to do with the fans as I as it did the advertising. Honestly, I, I've you know from what I had read online, it seemed like Snickers had quite a bit to do with them making the name change once they got wind of the petition. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know, for me, again, I'm a, I'm a pretty liberal guy in general, but you know, it's, it's speculative, speculative stuff. I mean, sure. She probably wasn't a very good person. I, I think some of it's well documented. As I said last yeah. time, I don't know much about exactly the, the sexual stuff outside of the rumors. One, I yeah. heard, I, I everybody buries careers, you yeah, know. Exactly, that's just a part of being a wrestling promoter, which is what she was at the end of the day. It, it, I heard a great comparison on the In This Ring podcast, which is another wrestling podcast that Joe Pizzapia hosts. He made the he made the you know like if it was named after you know uh, Roberto Clemente, if they, you took the Roberto Clemente Award and then you changed it to the Ty Cobb Award, who was known to be a racist yeah. and, yeah. and an overall a hole. Yep. And he kind of compared it to that's kind of what you just did. Yeah. I, I don't know how. Th- this kind of feels like Vince McMahon all over it, but I don't know how right now in today's climate that made it past. Uh, <laughs> Hey, Vinny the Mac. Sniff test? Yeah. 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 I mean, maybe you should wait until next year when things, you know. Yeah, ex- especially, you know, in the you know the Me Too movement and all the stuff going on right now. It seems like really bad timing to to not think that one through. And again, if it I think if it wasn't for Snickers and the advertisers, I don't think they would have changed the name. Because the reality of it is they still got an award named after the Ultimate Warrior. And if there's anybody that shouldn't have anything named after him, have you? If you've seen any of his videos that oh, he yeah. cut, I mean, like, wow. He, yeah, you can look him up and see his stuff still. Where Mula, you kind of hear in old stories, and mm-hmm. his stuff is despicable. Yeah, I. 
it, I guess it is what it is. You, yeah. you pick and choose, yeah. and if you stick with it so long, people tend to forget about it. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's move on to the the steroid scandal with Roman Reigns. This John Bravo, I guess his name was, finally released this big video he'd been hyping. I didn't care one bit. I, I watched five minutes of the video and thought, what the heck is this? And I, I stopped it. I I don't care. I don't know what this... I'm kind of disconnected from the story to begin with. Apparently, yeah. he for for what months he's been, you know, touting how he has all this major evidence to mm -hmm. bury a ton of wrestlers, and he's going to release it right, pretty close to WWE. Uh, had WWE's officials so scared that they held Braun Strowman's, you know, future booking for that event back just in mm -hmm. case. Like, he dropped something, and it was a major bomb, which apparently, from everything I've been reading, it nothing there. Did you watch it? I haven't watched it yet. I didn't know that he had, he had finally released it. That, that was news to me right here. Um, he took so long to release it, I figured there probably wasn't anything. It's just him trying, I, and that's kind of what I felt. It's just him trying to make a name or, or gather some attention. It there was I watched it, I'm like, I, I don't know. I mean, there was like a reference to a Luther Reigns, which I, like I said, oh yeah, I don't know if that's that was him or no, not or no. just that like, guy was on SmackDown way back in yeah. two thousand five, so, two thousand four. So even if Roman Reigns was implemented in this and like he released evidence that was damning, I'm not sure I cared. Not that. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to mean what I say here is, I don't care if athletes use steroids. Okay. I just don't care. They're adults. If that's what they want to do to their body to make a check, who am I to judge you? Yeah. I don't care. So it doesn't bother me. I grew up during the baseball steroid era. It didn't bother me one bit. I, I don't know if it's cheating or not. That's over my head, but it didn't bother me, and especially in wrestling where... Let's be honest. Steroids was kind of the cornerstone of wrestling in the 80s and 90s. Absolutely it was. And I, I don't know if I'm desensitized or I just don't care, but I just don't care. No, I, you know, so I'm with you as far as you know, in, in wrestling as far as you know, if you want to what you want to do, do do it. You know, it's not like in sports like with baseball where mm -hmm. you know, there's a potential of what they're using could affect statistics and records and, and things like that that sure. they're keeping tight numbers on. Um, so for those areas, I'd probably say, yeah, I'd be against, you know, baseball players using them, right? Uh, but when it comes to wrestling, it's work. So, I mean, as adults in 2018, if you know it's going to kill you, and it probably will at 45, if that's your choice, I'm not going to be mad at you. I can see WWE not wanting you to do it, because it's bad on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, bad on their corporate record. But for me, I, I don't care. I don't care at all. And I it's mean, not like I want these guys to go out and do it. I'm not like, hey, shoot yourself up, get out there and entertain me. I don't think the muscle-bound bodies really sell or make that much difference in today's wrestling. You look at some of I the agree. top guys right now. AJ Styles isn't cut. Yep. You, you have Samoa Joe isn't cut. No. Uh Kevin Owens isn't cut. Sami Zayn isn't cut. I, you know, Braun Strowman's not really cut. He's got cut some arms, but he's not like a he, more of a power lifter kind of yeah, look design. There's, Doom. there's. If if you were to sit me down in front of that roster and say, pick out one guy you think uses steroids, I'm not sure if I could. I'd be like, I look, I don't know what a steroid user. I get that they're all muscle bound yeah. and whatnot, but. I don't know if it matters today. In today's WWE or wrestling, maybe on the independent circuit, but I don't think you have the longevity. But yeah, even then, I don't think it matters on the independents because I've been to quite a few independent shows, and really, people are looking for that two hundred five live style, honestly, right. yeah, on the crew, on the independent scene, and that's not going to be conducive to that that muscle bound look. And, and I mean, even guys that aren't completely muscle bound, but have a different kind of physique. They have that more natural, you know, WWE style physique. A guy mm -hmm. like uh, Silas Young. Okay. You know, Silas Young is not a flip flop and fly kind of guy. And when he comes out, he, it's almost a little jarring. Like, 
oh, well, what is he going to do tonight? <laughs> right. Because you, you just, you know, it's hard for him to fit in. Yeah, I, I, I just don't care about steroids now. No. I, I think it's just been beaten down over the years. You, I was just old enough to really understand what was going on during the steroid era. Mm-hmm. I, I think I was too young and too disconnected during a Hogan, Vince McMahon steroid stuff. I don't know if that really affected me growing up because I didn't watch the news. I was a kid at that point. Yeah, same here. Now, meh. I, I hate yeah. to use the, that, that meh thing, but I don't want somebody coming into my house, and I don't know if it's a fair comparison or if it's apples or oranges, but I don't want somebody coming into my house and be like, whoa, 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 you're using Tide. I don't like the other stuff. I don't like the lemon smelly stuff. From here on out, you're using Tide because the rest of us don't, don't agree with it. I don't want to see anybody get hurt. It's almost like smoking where all of a sudden, I don't know, I smoke cigars. I don't smoke cigarettes, but I don't feel like I should tell someone they should or should not smoke a cigarette. No, I don't. I mean, I don't like being around it, but it's not my call, to be honest with you. If that's what they want to do, that's what they want to do. But it's this, yeah, it's the same kind of thing. I mean, in, in reality today, and I don't know a ton about the new stuff that's out there, but I mean, if they can engineer something that's safer. Why not? Yeah, knock you, yourself you out, the, man. You made the face, but yeah. nobody could see it on the yeah, podcast. Yeah, like, knock yourself out. You know? If it's safer, yeah. yeah. And then there's the steroids that help you heal faster. Yeah. Why can't I? don't know what the... Look, I'm ignorant. I will be the first one to say I'm ignorant. So when I ask this question, it comes from an ignorance. But if there's something out there that helps you heal faster... And what is it, horse hormones or whatever? I don't know, HGH? Human, or- I, human growth hormone? Something like that. Yeah. Well, why do we not love music? I don't know. That's ignorance. Once again, I'm not I'm not out there campaigning, but I don't know enough to really say, oh, you know, long term. I don't know what it is. Well, you know, and I think it's probably, if more than anything, especially with wrestling, it's airing uh, air on the side of caution. You know, they've had that. so much going on over the last couple decades with all those deaths and everything that I, I would just assume that they could look and say, eh, it might be safer. Let's get a little more time before we start green lighting anything. Look, it, it, the the public outrage for it anyways, it will, you'll never be able to openly use it with the public outrage. Agreed. I don't know. Agreed. I don't know if you were to develop a healthy steroid that wouldn't have hurt you but helped you heal. I don't know if it'd ever be accepted anyways just because of the word steroid or hormone or growth behind it. No, you're probably right about that. I think I think the era where that is an acceptable thing to do is well over. And, mm-hmm. I, and I don't think it's coming back. Um, at least in the mainstream. You know, there are there are people in the fitness industry and things like that that still do that stuff, but... What are some of the matches? Let's get on to some yeah, more happy yeah. stuff. I just yeah. I, th- there was just something that's been bothering yep. me was this John Bravo thing, and PD and I really made it a point not to talk about it because it didn't make sense, and I don't know if I cared anyways if any of them got busted for it. It's not like they're cheating. Yeah, no. I, sorry. I, there was just I felt like right now was a good time to just kind of get that off. Yeah, no, I, I agree. It, that's... It, it, look, I admit. I am ignorant to a lot of the effects. I, I not sat down and I not read it. I don't know the good, the bad, the pros, the cons. It's just a thought from from a fan that sits and watches from a distance. Is meh. Yeah, it's a choice. You know, it's a choice somebody's got to make individually, and I don't. You know, I, I don't, I'm not in a position to make to judge him on it. Let's take this opportunity to talk about our Facebook page and everything yeah. we have going on. We'll, we'll transition into some a little more current wrestling talk. Yeah. But we've got the website that's constantly being updated by me, of course. So I don't know yeah. how I want the website to lock, look. But if you go to WrestlingPerspectivePodcast.com, you can get the link to iTunes, Stitcher. You can actually listen to the podcast right out there. The only link we don't have up there is the tuned in link. But... You can Google it and find it yeah. if that's how you listen to your podcasts. If you're listening on iTunes, please, 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 it helps us grow. We've been very – and before we started recording, I was talking to Russ here, and I said, look, our, we are ranked 16th in all of sports podcasts. 
Like, we were beating part in the interruption. At one point, we were higher than Stone Cold Steve Austin's. And that's because of you, the fans. Even you. You subscribed. You liked. You were yep. a fan and a friend before you started. We brought you into the loop. Yep. So, without you guys going over to iTunes, you subscribe to the podcast, read it five stars, and leave a cute, fun comment. And if you leave a comment, we'll read it on the podcast. We'll you know leave your name, and we'll be like, hey, you know, Russ McCall here says... I like everything about this podcast except for Dennis Farrell. You know, yeah. <laughs> whatever. Petey's great. Who's this Dennis clown? But if you leave a comment on there, we'll see it. We'll read it and give you some props on the podcast. We are trying to be, I don't know, I don't listen to a lot of wrestling podcasts now because I don't want to feel like I'm stealing their shtick yeah. or, or copying topics that they're doing. But I want to be more fan-friendly podcast. I want to read Facebook comments, I want to read emails, I want to make sure we're working on a way to actually take phone calls because I feel like once a month I want to do a caller-based, you know, hey, at 9 o'clock on this day, try to call it. it it's down the line. We're still yeah. working on that. But we want to be very fan-driven, and that's what you're doing over there at the Facebook page too. Yeah, I'm trying to slowly but surely um... – We're up. We're almost to 500 likes. Yeah, find find some topics on there that will just generate some conversation and interest and kind of help see what people's interests are. You know, some of the questions we put up before about, you know, the tiers of tag teams. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean... That was a great one. Yeah, and there was some wide range of teams in those two different tiers, which I some of that really caught me off guard. And there were some teams that made no appearances that surprised me just the same what was the one that surprised you the most um i would say b i think beer money was on there i was a little shocked, a top yeah. five okay um i am absolutely a fan of beer money to be honest but if but i don't know yeah you know they're, exposure they're top, wise they're not top five no. longevity exposure yeah it, I made the case that you know a lot of those lists didn't have demolition on there. Yeah, which is right. And and well, and uh, you it was funny when you guys mentioned on there before that uh, the other week that you know I I didn't have uh, the horseman on my list. We we talked about Bef- you, yeah the day before I I listened to it I was working on the page and I realized oh man I left that off and I went and actually edited it oh, and then I listened and then I saw it you. and I was like oh we, man they caught me before they, I didn't get it fast <laughs> enough but yeah so our Facebook page we're building up to be a safe haven for fans whether unless you're Russ which will hammer you on the podcast yeah, rightfully so so over on the in this ring podcast just this last week they did the best and worst factions interesting and they i i'm not gonna i go over to their podcast and listen because i'm not gonna i don't want to you know ruin it yeah. i want you guys to go over give them a download and listen they're friends of the show joe pizza pizza said but pizza p as i said <laughs> will be hosting next week's podcast as i said I, I go from beach cigars in the sand to dollywood Do, yeah <laughs> to dolly who it's like I'm going to feel like a hostage. You know, they're going to show pictures. I'm going to be blinking in it, like, you know, sending my coordinates. Hopefully, somebody will come save me. Well, it's Dollywood in a motorhome in, which with is, my in-laws. Yeah, that. Re- you, you, if you if you don't provide the whole story, yeah, you know, people might just think you're whining. But no, nah, I mean, I'm whining. I, I, I can see some. <laughs> I can see some merit to your wine. And I don't want to go a week or so without doing a podcast. So yeah. that's why you're here next yep. week. I won't be here, but. We're we're doing this for the fans. I got like tomorrow. I got a four a.m. flight. That stinks, man. Dude, I'm not happy one bit. I'm I'm quite miserable. So factions. I yes. just want to touch on this because this is something we mentioned. Whether you and I are out drinking or PD and I are doing the podcast, yep. There needs to be more factions in the WWE. Yeah, I could handle more factions. Um, I don't want to. I wouldn't want to return to. To that era, Everybody, yeah, the the, union the two, yes, and the ministry. Yes. And the I wouldn't brood. want everyone's in a faction kind of feel, mm-hmm. but I think if you do it right, there's a place for yeah one or two factions on each brand. Mm-hmm. 
Even if it's one main faction and you've got people coming together to try to counter them, right. you know, on each brand, you know, that adds a different dynamic and a different feel to it. But you have to me, if you're going to do a faction, you can't have a bunch of B and C level stars filling up the ranks, you know, like the NWO. Yeah, like the NWO got to. Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, even now you've got the Miztourage, but, you know, those guys, I mean, you could consider them a faction. There's three of them, the three of the guys together. I think the Miztourage is a faction. Yeah, and the two of them are complete jobs. More than two. Mm-hmm. Is it, two's yeah. a tag team, three's a faction. Yeah. One more thing, because we're going to wrap this up here yeah. in a minute. We, we put in a solid, I want this to be about 40 minutes. Yeah. Paul Heyman. There are a lot of talks about Paul Heyman. And I had a conversation with a friend about Paul Heyman just the other day. I said, as amazing as Paul Heyman is, he only works with Brock Lesnar. If you put Paul Heyman, as we saw with Cesaro, it didn't work. You put Paul Heyman with Ronda Rousey, it does, it won't work. I don't think Paul Heyman will work with anybody else but Brock Lesnar, just because that's what we know, peanut butter and jelly. And another thing, when Brock Lesnar first came back this last time, he was there a week or two without Heyman. He tried to talk, didn't like it, and he forced the WWE to hire Heyman back. Yeah, I don't know if they'd want him without him. I don't know if Heyman would stick around without Brock. I think Paul Heyman, and this is all hearsay and just me guessing, I think Paul Heyman's perfectly okay with walking away from the WWE without Brock Lesnar. He doesn't need him. He was happy without him. He created the Heyman hustle and did some amazing stuff outside that I think he still does. I can't see him sticking around without Brock Lesnar. No, I can't either. And I don't think he should, to be honest with you. Because I'm I'm 100% in agreement with you. I don't think that he works the same with other people. can't. Because he spends so much... He's so wrapped into that character that is the advocate for Brock Lesnar... Unless you're going to give somebody, whoever you're replacing Brock with, that same level of push and that same kind of attention, it's going to fall flat. How long the did booking this, has to match. How long did the Cesaro thing last? It felt like maybe a month? Yeah, maybe. if tops. Yeah. yeah. There was nothing memorable about it. I mean, they dropped it as quickly as they, they put them both together. If Paul Heyman was so great... Cesaro, as as much as we've ever said before the bar, which he's finally found his stroke with the bar. Which is great. Yeah, it's a great team. I love the bar. He couldn't talk. No. And you, you put a talker with him, he will be a mega star, and it just didn't work. Now, I, it, I'm not saying it's Paul Heyman's fault. I'm just saying Paul Heyman was this amazing guy who can elevate everybody. Why didn't it work with Cesaro? I, well, I think there a lot of it had to do with the booking, too. Again, you know, you said... You, I'm not going to blame it on the booking this time. I don't think he has the same chemistry with the other people, mm-hmm. and I agree with that. But, again, you know, you're looking... When you're looking at whether it's Ryback or it's Cesaro, you know... He doesn't have... Those guys were jobbed out. So it doesn't matter how good the talking Paul does. They were jobbers before Paul, and they were jobbing after Paul, and nothing changed. So... It, they didn't allow for a shift in the booking to make to make it feel special, which he, makes it fail. He has fine tuned this version of Paul Heyman with the ladies and gentlemen. I'm the advocate yep. that he can't be the advocate for anybody else. He's no. just the advocate for him. He would have to create a new stick for another wrestler that just won't work because if they stick Paul Heyman with Ronda Rousey and he's like, "I am the advocate for Ronda Rousey." It just won't work. It'll bomb. Yeah, it, yeah. It's bound to bomb. It might be hot for two weeks where everybody's like, oh, Heyman and Rhonda. But look, you know what Rhonda needs? Rhonda just needs to be quiet and go out and kick butt. Yes. She needs to not smile. Right. Go out, <laughs> kick butt, look a little mean, and mm-hmm. just practice at the you know performance center or somewhere else with her mic skills. Don't let her talk for a year. You know, we love fantasy booking. My perfect fantasy booking for Ronda Rousey is you don't give her a belt for a year. You make her chase it. You give her, you know, side quests as nerdy as that just sounds. Whatever you have to do, yeah. And at next year's main event at WrestleMania, it's her streak because she's going to have to have a streak versus Asuka's streak for a belt. I love it. Main event. Or title versus title, whatever you have to do. Right, but that has to be the main event. 
It just has yeah. to be. And it could be the biggest event ever if you keep – because I don't think Asuka needs a belt right now. I even put out no. a tweet. If you don't follow me on Twitter, shame on you. But I put out a tweet that said, to me, the the best booking would be if Asuka wins via DQ and you really show Charlotte Flair is the dirtiest player in the game. She she She's ripping off everything from her father – have yep. her just. I saw that. Have it come, to, you know. She just barely loses, kicks out, says, "You know what? Screw this. I'm taking a chair." Gets DQ'd. You protect Oscar Street because she gets a win. You keep Charlotte with the belt, and Oscar needs the chase right now because if you give her the belt now, what what's left for Oscar? It's just we're counting the time on when is she gonna lose. I want to see her chase that belt. I I want to see you protect Charlotte Flair. And by having this kind of ending, you can prolong it. You can drive this for another several months. But don't give Asuka the belt at WrestleMania. You, you, no, you're right. You could, you could progress it for a couple of months. My only concern would be crowd response to a screwy ending at WrestleMania. You have to turn Charlotte full heel, full heel here. Yeah, and, absolutely, you do. I, I, I would. I just kind of assumed that that's where they were going with and it. And when you do that, I think you can turn that crowd response around if you give it a little bit of a brutal. It's not one chair shot. Ding, ding, ding. She grabs a belt and runs, but she sits there and just beats on Oscar. I don't know if I'd want to make her look that strong. I does it? She she it, have her start I mean, calling her. Do something but, but, shady. But you but. gotta have the announcers help to push it over. Like, oh my god, she's the dirtiest female in the game, or or something yeah. like that. But you really and look, maybe you can have you know Oscar overcome and you know hit her with their move, and then boom, that's how that ends. But I want to see Charlotte go full heel in this in some sort of cheat. Gets DQ, gets busted, you know? If they could find a way to do this effectively without making everyone mad. I don't they care. feel like they got ripped off. What, what's it, what's it matter? Investing. What, everybody's going to feel ripped off anyway. So look at the card. How many yeah. singles matches are on this card? This that, is what bothers me about this. the last several WrestleManias. This one really irritates me. <laughs> Again, because I'm going to see so many like multi-person matches. I hate multi-person matches, mm-hmm. and, and that drives it's me nuts. lazy booking. But yeah. you, you would have uh, Charlotte Nasca, Nia versus Bliss, which that looks like that's where they're, it's going. Yeah, it is. Roman sure. and Brock. Yeah, Brock. And AJ. Is AJ? AJ and Nakamura. Yeah. So four. Everything else is multi-person. Tag team counts as a multi. I'm throwing tag yeah, team in yeah. the multi. But, you know, you're going to have Owens, Zane, and, and McMahon. Yeah. Too many multi-person matches. Yeah. yeah, everything's a multi-person, and I don't like them Even the Intercontinental Championship is a multi-person match. I don't, I'm not happy. You know, and this is the same. It looks like the TV title, or you know, TV, <laughs> the TV the title. United, <laughs> United States Championship is yeah. going to be a multi-person match. I'm not excited. No, no, not at all. Those three ways, particularly, they're so formulaic in WWE. Anyway, mm-hmm. you see it going a million miles away. Yeah, you know exactly where it's going. You see, you know, guy gets knocked out. Here comes the other guy. It's you know, it's the whole pattern, and it, it never changes. That pattern never changes, and so they're they're just not effective to me in getting me excited about a match mm-hmm. because it's almost like even then you're like you've got too many options. Yep. There's no one. There's no clear cut. I should dislike this guy. And I should really like this one. You've got three options. So you're splitting the crowd no matter what, no matter which way you go. And to me, if there's that, I'm just de invest. Mm-hmm. To be honest, I just de invest at that point. And I think that's one of the most frustrating things about the card this year is I see the talent that's on it. And that part excites me, you know, especially AJ Nakamura. And, right. You know, the, the talent that's on the show excites me because it's going to be. An entertaining, well wrestled show. The concepts of the match and the stories that they're telling to get there frustrate me because I, I don't have a vested interest in much of anything that they're doing. I don't know if I said this on on our podcast, and I might have said this, but stop making WrestleMania an all inclusive event. Everybody shows up. 
Agreed. Yeah, you did mention it. But yeah, I agree. I want WrestleMania to be the best of the best. And sometimes good people get left off a card. I understand you want to see people get paid. But in order to make WrestleMania special, you have to make it special again. It doesn't feel special. You know what it feels like? It, it, It feels like if you were on the roster for six months, you're going to have a match at WrestleMania. Well, that's it. And so you, here's the thing I think, and I think you're right. You know, that the concept of we got to put all these matches out there and get all these guys on the show because we need to get them paid. That's the, you know, we're doing the right thing by these by the wrestlers. I think it's bull. Pay, pay them anyways. Exactly. If you've got the money. With that many matches, some of those, ma- some of those matches are four minutes. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, you didn't put in four minutes this weekend. I can't pay you. Just pay him for the four minutes, and I'll I'll kick in something to keep him off the show. A, a Kickstarter, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, like, or do something Friday night. Yeah. Ha- have a have a WrestleMania Friday night event. We get you have NXT, but if you had a Friday night event, you the kick off the WrestleMania card or something like that. Then you have a little this, something during fan access or something. Yeah, and sometimes they have a wrestling event yeah. where. where a couple people from New Orleans show up and wrestle in a ring. I've never been there, so but that's kind of the feel I get. But you could absolutely have a fan access card there. Why not? Okay, pay them. Yeah, but, pay them. Do that. Instead. But WrestleMania is no longer special to me. No, it, it's lost. It, it's just a spectacle, and a but it you, doesn't have that. Well, even the main events, you know, mm-hmm. the matches when they, when they come, through, I don't get that feel with the way they promote and the way they hype. Right. This, oh my god, I have to see this. This is going to be epic. During the Attitude Era, the WWE, nobody, nobody in sports, nobody in football, baseball, basketball, nobody anywhere was any better than the WWE at creating hype videos. Oh, the, particularly that Austin Rock one. That that The Austin <laughs> Rock one is by far the most amazing one. You can YouTube it right now. You... That was amazing tell, storytelling in a hype video. We'll post a link to that, by the way. So I, oh, I think that's a good. Look at that. We'll make sure you guys can. If you haven't seen that or you haven't seen it in a while, it's a, it's a great video. You've got to watch it. Unfortunately, they've gotten away from that. With yeah. Because those storylines took so long to unfold that you can make an amazing hype video. Storylines now, three weeks. In and out. Boom, you're done. On to the next. Yeah. You can't have a a great hype video if you're not putting in the time to create the moments to throw into a hype package. Well, and, and you know what else I think too, and I know it sounds blasphemous in, in a way oh for boy. people. The idea that, you know, winner of the Rumble gets his automatic shot and all that stuff, I think detracts from my interest in WrestleMania. Really? It does. Because... Back in the day, when you look at the most exciting WrestleManias, mm-hmm. many of them, and granted, they were doing that then, but they were able to find a better way to work it in, where it felt like this has been tension building for almost 12 months coming around, like Austin and Rock. Okay. That was building and building and building that tension come around, where by the time you got to WrestleMania, it felt like... This is the time. It's finally here. This is finally going to come to a conclusion. It's going to end. One of these guys is going down tonight. Mm -hmm. With the way they've done, especially the last few years, I feel like everything that happens from May through December means absolutely nothing. Everything starts in January. All new feuds start. Everything pops up. Mm-hmm. The title feuds are determined in January. The season ends in, in March. It's a very short turnaround, and you don't have that long build of tension to really get a groove and feel. Nor does it matter who people get behind all year long. You know, because before it's like, oh, you get behind somebody, and then you start really seeing the steam pick up, and like, oh, Rumble's coming. You know. Again, 1996, look at Steve Austin, right? Started getting behind things, started coming up on it. Oh boy, here he goes. And then you see that performance and you're excited about it. You know, that should have been Braun Strowman this year. You're right. Frank, it should have been Braun Strowman this year. People got behind him, people put their investment in. 
And they got this far, and they still didn't really know what to do up until last week. And, it and was he's the most guy in the company. Way. Yeah, it, it's a terrible idea. I'm, I hate the idea of that match. Did Did you listen to last week's podcast? Yeah. The the point I made. Do you agree or disagree with what I say? Because there's no winners in this match. I agree. I agree 100. percent I think everyone comes out looking weak when you do this. There's no way because you devalue Strowman to a level. If he wins. He'll look cool for a week carrying the tag team titles, but eventually he's going to have to drop them. Yeah. And if you're going to do something loses, goofy funny yeah. to get that hat, to make that happen. And if he loses, you've wiped away all this buildup, which in reality, I think, all right, you know, the bar should be able to really beat him up. I, I can see that. But you've built this guy up to withstand car accidents and flip trucks and throw, you know, Things of people that should not have been thrown. Now Seamus can take him. No, right? It, right. Yeah, so it doesn't work for anybody. No, and not to mention you just devalued every other team on your roster. Because no, no matter who wins, right? Well, the only thing that works is if the bar wins. If the bar wins, sure, they beat one man, but they beat the monster man. Yeah. But you're not going to put a tag team over on a guy that you've been building up for a main event. You're, you can't. No, you're stupid. Well, well. You could, but I. It's going to be anticlimactic if he doesn't win. Yeah, and I if he okay, wins, yeah. you've booked yourself into a corner that you can't get out of. Because now he's going to eventually have to drop him. Yeah, and don't don't give me this, uh, Braun. You're going to have to have a tag team partner. He walks down the hall and sees. That's exactly what they're going to do. I, I know. <laughs> That's exactly what they're going to do. It, it, here's my best guess: is that they're going to find Kurt Hawkins. Mm-hmm. Pull him into the ring. Braun says, just stand there. And he does it all by himself while Hawkins stands there. And then they win. And he takes both belts and leaves. And Hawkins, every week now, will just follow him down and not do anything. Or Hawkins takes the belt and runs. Either that, but that... Excitedly runs from him every week. That's the only way you can drop the belt is if Kurt Hawkins is his partner and he takes the pin where, you know, he's tired of sitting on the sidelines, he tags in and gets pinned immediately. Only other thing I could think of is if you put Elias with him. Elias ends up being the guy that, you know, I'll team with the next guy that walks through this door. It's Elias. And Elias (laughs) cracks him with a guitar, cracks him with the cello or something himself he gets a cheap a cheap thing over him even if he knocks him outside of the ring and then the bar pins Elias because he was stupid enough to cost his partner and knock him down something like that to be a, a goofy screwy finish and then you know Braun wait time out you're, throws him into the crowd wait wait hang on you're all for this goofy screwy finish no I'm not but, I'm just saying this is a potential I could see them doing something like that. I was going to say, because if you tell me the Charlotte would be groof, goofy and, and screwy and people would get mad, they would riot over that kind of finish here. Oh, I don't think so. I think they'd be more upset about a, uh, a non-finish in Charlotte and Asuka. No. I, if it's great storytelling and an amazing match, and you've told the story, and now Charlotte goes full heel, and you know you need to have somebody really out there to push the dirtiest female in the game. Yeah. And I, you can't call her the dirtiest player. You call her the dirtiest female in the game. And and if you start pushing that after that moment, people will love it. Cause, I think cause, it's, I think it's good. Cause but when I think Rick that's Flair called do. himself. I'm the dirty. Everybody loved it. But I think the way they booked, that's something you do at the Royal Rumble, not oh no, not at WrestleMania. I, maybe if this match finale, was maybe. at the Royal Rumble, I would agree. But you, what do you, what do you do with? her after you give her the belt she's you're you can't end the streak that's that's the biggest people's pet peeve about goldberg in wcw was you ended the streak when it should have kept going yeah she's been on she's the, gonna win yeah for sure she's she's been on the roster for so long now i would say so long it's what six six months it feels like right oh. she came on did she come on after wrestlemania last year maybe maybe so maybe close to a year I could be off on that, but I'm trying. No, she didn't. She came up. Can you Google that? Yeah. But Google that for me, because I want to be very accurate. It feels like she hasn't been up for a year, but maybe she has, as you Google it. It, it still feels like too soon in the streak to a end it and b give her a title, because the second she gets the title, that streak's on borrowed time, right? Absolutely, it is, and. and it's going to get tiring. Absolutely. 
Because you only have so many wrestlers on the roster. Yes. And that is something that I think is a big issue for them in general. That's why you need it in With the bland sprint. Bland, brand split. What do you got? Uh, it looks like October 22nd, 2017. So she just came up. Yeah. I, I knew. Yep. It feels like she's wow. been up longer than she really yeah. has. Yeah, it was just but, after SummerSlam. But it's too soon for her to have a belt right now. I agree. But it's going to be too late. They're going to do it. But I, I, I do like I, I The more I think about it, the more I do like the idea. If they could find a way. Make her chase. To creatively chase it out. Because she hasn't been chasing the belt. If you look at what she's done, she hasn't chased the belt. No, no, she hasn't. She, I mean, they teased it with Bliss, but she's never really chased Bliss or the belt or whoever had the belt at any of the times on any of the shows. She ultimately won the Royal Rumble, and this begins her chase. Her chase should not end now. Her chase needs to keep going. I'm glad you, I agree, and I, I'm glad you brought up the Royal Rumble, then, because that's something I wanted to ask you about. On okay. The, that we, 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 we talked about off-air before. We, we still have, what, the... the Ten minutes. Ten minutes. You gotta be yeah, out of we'll here fast. Yeah. yeah, we'll be okay. Um, so the women's Royal Rumble from this past year. Mm-hmm. That was fun. Whatever, entertaining. It was cameos. Cute. cute. Yep. Okay, what do you do next year? All right. How do you get attention? You gonna bring them all, all those people back again and try that again? You don't have enough people. Next year, where did the the women's Royal Rumble popped up at the middle, right? No, it closed the show. It closed the show. All right. Next year, it's got to start the show. Mm-hmm. I, I, you, you have to totally move it around now in the card. And I would be okay if it opened the show. A little bit less nostalgia. A little more NXT. And you still have your nostalgia acts. The guys still have their nostalgia acts. Yeah. And they have a overdue amount of... Oh, overdue a overabundance of jobbers because let's not let the guys off the hook here the royal yeah. rumble has not been very good for the last couple of years with the men quite a few there's Probably. not a ton of talent they're you know they're not very well spurred out we all know ty dillinger comes out at 10 and we all go, oh 10 yeah the, the guys have not been that great you can't compare the girls to the guys because they're just been they have more lineage and when you think of the royal rumble you think of Ric Flair and everybody in the past. You don't think of the, maybe you stop around the time John Cena made this surprise comeback, or when Chris Jericho came out at number two. That's about it. Yeah, living, I think you're right with Cena. The Cena when he came out at the uh, at Madison Square Garden yeah. was probably the last one anybody that you that you can look back now consciously to me and think back and be like, oh, I remember that rumble really well. They are living off of borrowed memories with the last couple of Royal Rumbles. Yeah, let's be honest with ourselves. Yeah. It's not been phenomenal. It's not been great. It's not been surprising, really. No. The women have to do something different. And I, I hopefully the brand, brand split, split is gone. And you can have a few more extra women come be, be around and make it more meaningful. But you've got to build up your mid-card talent for the female Royal Rumble to work. Because you've not built up your mid-card talent. It feels like there's Asuka, Charlotte, Bliss. And by the way, those two were not in it. No, they weren't. I said, I think I even said this to you, but not on the podcast. In order, now it might make sense in the second one, maybe not in the first, but you have that winner become the women's champion. That might be the only way to do it. You know, somehow it becomes vacant. Somebody got hurt. And in order for, you know, Said, you know, newest person, we're putting a belt up at, at the Women's Royal Rumble. I would be okay with that. And I, I, they've done it at the Royal Rumble a few times. I mean, Ric Flair. Yep, that was a perfect timing. And see, but see, I, I think my biggest concern is year after year, like, you know, it's two battle royals every year, two, ro- two, two WrestleMania battle royals after that, two Money in the Banks. Look, I mean, I, I understand. Do you need to do that? Can you alternate something? I mean, w- you're right. Actually, I didn't even think about the women's battle royal I, in, in the men. I have not put that in my mind in the context that we just saw one several, a couple two weeks months ago. Two months ago. Yeah. 
I would be okay with you getting rid of it. Or maybe change the Royal Rumble to Andre the Giant Royal Rumble or something. But you don't need to have two. Or if you do a Andre the Giant Royal Rumble... Do it in the middle of the year. It doesn't need to be at WrestleMania, I no, don't think. Well, I, mean, if you, and again, I guess it has to it, be because that's what we all remember Andre the Giant for. But at uh, this point, you're, I mean, with as early as those WrestleMania shows start, I mean, these Battle Royals are going on like 4 p.m. I'm going to be mid-nap still trying to get there. I'm not even worrying about that yet. You put the Women's Royal Rumble on SummerSlam. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not, not, or, not, or you don't do it. Not the women's. I don't think it's necessary. <laughs> not the women's Royal Rumble, but the, the moolah. The, the moolah, yeah, yeah. that or whatever it is. Maybe yeah. you put that. Or you just don't do it. I don't think it, you need to put two of everything on every show to show your equ- you have equality. I think you're 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 oversaturating everything and killing it all. Well, at the that's same time. the problem with getting every person on in the show on the show. Yeah, you're oversaturating it. I it, that goes back to that complaint with the two Royal Rumbles. If you really connect them both, but. You have to have a female Royal Rumble. You kind of do. But why don't you just have just a female-only pay-per-view once? And then that could be the main event. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have to build up your division. And it's going to take time to do that. But that might be... You have to do something different next year. You can't rely on Kelly Kelly and Tori and, you know, Lita all to come back again. Because it only worked once. It's only yeah. It's only got so it's got a one time shelf life, and after that you're in trouble because you're I, only going to have 12, 15 girls. I wish you would have spread them out. I you know look Molly Molly Holly might be one of those only girls that'll show up almost like a what's his uh, Rick the Model Martel. Every yeah. year he showed up, you know, and no matter did, what, yeah. no matter what, maybe she could be the only one because she looked good and. I could buy that. She's not that big of a star. She's not oversaturated. I, you never really see much from her. No, you don't. But, yeah, you, you have to limit your... Give me a surprise. There's got to be a surprise, by the way. Yeah. That's that's why I was mad that Ronda didn't show up in, in that battle royal. Because that should have been a surprise. But give me a, a injury angle. Write a girl off TV. Make me forget about her. Make me believe that she's coming back a few, you know, a few months after Royal Rumble. You know, like John Cena. Yeah. John Cena really pumped some life into those Royal Rumbles when he came back after that injury. They're like, John Cena. That's still one of the though, what, top five greatest Royal Rumble moments. They consider it, yeah. I, <laughs> it kind of was. Yeah. That's what you got to do. I Sometimes mean, when you really think back about I think back about the Royal Rumble, and I... Really look back at the cards and look back at the matches and what happened and the results. I get the same kind of feeling that sometimes I get with The Undertaker. Mm -hmm. These have been going on long enough. This has been around long enough that we're starting to build it up in our heads to be a little bit better than it actually was. Well, that's what we kind of just said. After the John Cena Royal Rumble... They were not great. And even if you look before that, how many of them... I wouldn't we're see spectacular. Me. How about this? There's a handful that were amazing. How about status quo? Not I wouldn't use the word not great. There were a couple of them that were not great, but just status quo. It's the same thing. You don't really do anything and you've gotten away from surprise entrance. Really, Rey Mysterio is kind of the biggest name to come back. Yeah, you know, last yeah. year. They didn't th- th- this last one. Last year, I don't think there was a surprise that came back, was there? Not that I can remember. And I'm not sure the year before. No, no. Well, you know, I think that's after why, look, yeah, that's why we watch. Yeah, after um, after that Daniel Bryan situation a couple of years ago, yeah. I think they kind of got away from the surprises because they they realized the backlash was a little too much if it wasn't a good one. Oh, or, or with Batista. Yeah, that didn't that flop too. I would have been happy seeing Batista come back. Yeah, I'd have been fine with it. So. Well, look, guys, we stayed away from news because if you listen now, like I said, where we're recording to when we release, the news we talk about wasn't very relevant. So we just want to sit down and just have a conversation, go down memory lane, talk about issues, not so much stories, although the steroid thing, I just had something to- a little more, you know, we wanted something that's less 
Time. Timely. Yeah. Yes. Because I, I wanted to make sure we put something out for you guys. And next week, as I said, there will be a more timely show. Joe Pizapia, as I said, will come in, take over for me, and P.D. Williams will be back. How, how do you think the – we didn't even address this, but how do you think the P.D. Williams theme song at the beginning? I love it. We we had a few people that said, and you were one of them, yep. we need to have an entrance. I'm not going to put one at the end because I'm too lazy. But <laughs> – it's going to be an abrupt stop. We're going to leave you, and you're going to be left in the void going, where'd you go? But but <laughs> we're we're going to try using the P.D. Williams TNA Canadian theme song as our new song. Because I don't know if there's anything else that makes sense or no, we can get I, around copyright-wise. So that's, a, that's why I suggested that earlier. And it, you know, it, you know, that that was, was your suggestion. So this I is, think it's like a, a good fit. I feel nice weird doing it, it without, without him here, but oh well. <laughs> Well, well, you got a better. If he cared, he would. You got a better replacement, right, Pete? That's right. So remember, head over wrestlingperspectivepodcast dot com. There, you can leave a leave an email. If you leave something mm-hmm. for next week's show, I will make sure that they get it. That they, you know, address your questions. We are trying to be more fan driven than any other fan podcast, wrestling podcast. So utilize it. There's a website, wrestlingperspectivepodcast dot com, all one word. You can get the link to iTunes, Stitcher, all that stuff's over there. You can listen right from the website. Remember, we don't grow unless you tell your friends about us. So go on to your message boards or your Facebook pages or your wrestling friends and and just tell them about this. Ask them to listen because that's how we grow. We're trying to grow a really kind of cool community here. Well, yeah, same, and same thing with on the, on the Facebook yes. page. If you want, if you if you got a topic and you know an idea you want to float by that you'd like to hear discussed on the show, drop us a line. Everyone's checking them to make sure we we get your comments. And there, you know, Dennis already said he's reading them off and he's going to be addressing those things. So, you know, if you want to hear your comment or your question read right on on the air, that's a great place to drop it. Um, or if you just want to have a great discussion about wrestling, there's something that's been nagging on your head and you don't have any friends that, you know, in near proximity that you can, you can bounce that off of, throw it out there on the page and let's just see what happens and see what, see what the rest of the community kind of thinks about your thoughts and ideas. And by the way, the next couple of shows, when I come back, I think it's two, two weeks, we're going to have yep. Kevin Heffernan from Super Troopers 2, good yep. friend of mine, just recently did some stuff with WWE. He was at SmackDown, and he filmed a family game night, uh, Dodgeball, uh, Super Troopers yep. versus WWE Superstars. And for, for anybody who, who may not be familiar with his name, it's Farva. Farva. Farva from, from Super Troopers. Yes, good, good friend of mine. So I'm very excited. I'm excited to hear that, and I'm excited for him to come into town next, and you invite me to get some beers. I, I will be more than happy. <laughs> and after that, I think Petey's working on Frankie Kazarian. Oh, that'll be a fantastic. Listen. I hope so. We're cigar. We're hopefully we can become cigar best friends. I, I like that a lot. So thank you guys for hanging out for well, better part of an hour here yeah. on the Wrestling Perspective podcast, Facebook, PD Williams and myself are on Twitter. Just tweet us. Uh, as I said, Facebook. We're trying to grow that and tell your friends about the podcast. We cannot hammer that home. We left Wrestling Inc., so we don't really have that big community behind us. We're out on our own, trying to make a name for ourselves, and we need your help. Oh, and before I forget, yeah. I ju- it just hit me oh, last second. You ruined the show. Oh, no, yeah, no, this is going to be an even better ending. Uh, so I, we tipped off at the beginning that I'm going to be in WrestleMania New Orleans this year. Yes. So I am going to do my best uh, through my stupors uh, in, in, in rough moments Yes. to try to uh, do some live videos. Do some live video through, rest, through WrestleMania weekend to kind of give uh, a wrestling perspective, fan perspective. Uh, of WrestleMania weekend live from New Orleans from time to time throughout the week. Yeah, you know, even when you're there, will you do a couple live of people coming in, maybe some of the pre-show, changing things around, shoot some video and, and upload it because I think that'll give people a different perspective too of WrestleMania. Yes, yep. I'm gonna and I'm gonna try to get uh, a, l- a little bit of you know even just fan perspective of interviews, you know, just clips from. I like that people just you kind of hear what everybody's excited for for the mm-hmm. weekend and, and and the fan perspective from the WrestleMania experience angle angle, and and kind of give a new flavor that we could add to the to the Facebook page tonight. Post some of your videos of chopping people. I can do that. I think you should. I can do that. I'll get those up. All right. Wrestling perspective for this week. Next week, it's Joe Pizapia, PD Williams, no me. Congratulations to the people who hate me. We'll see you guys <laughs> next week. Thank you, guys. <laughs>